In this video, I'm going to chat about material condition modifiers, aka these little M's and L's that you see in the feature control frame. Now, it's, it's one of those things that trips people up when they're first learning GD&T. It looks like it's just adding complication and making uh, things more difficult to understand, more difficult to make, more difficult to inspect. But once you understand what these symbols mean, typically they give you more tolerance and if not make things easier to inspect, they at least don't make things more difficult to inspect, okay? So what is a material condition modifier? It's uh, something that's used to indicate which material condition the tolerance or the datum reference applies at. So what's a material condition? A material condition is either MMC, maximum material condition, LMC, least material condition, or RFS regardless of feature size. It's just a shorthand way of comparing uh, how large or small features are compared to each other. So the MMC, maximal material condition, is the largest external feature, like a pin or a shaft, and the smallest internal feature, like a hole. So when you compare the MMC of a pin to the MMC of a hole, that's the closest, the tightest they can be. So if those two parts fit when they're both at their maximum allowed produced sizes, the MMC, and there's clearance or allowance on the drawing, you know they'll fit. LMC is the opposite. It's the smallest uh, external feature and the largest internal feature. Now, another way to remember this Maximum material condition is when the feature makes the part heavier. So the smallest hole adds material, makes the part heavier. A pen that has a larger diameter makes the part heavier. Now the last one, RFS, regardless of feature size, does not have its own symbol. Before 1994, it was an S and a little dot indicated regardless of feature size. So you might ask, how do we know it's regardless of feature size if it doesn't have a symbol? That doesn't make any sense, right? gd &T is all about symbols. Well, the answer is that it's implied, but only if the feature control frame applies to a feature of size. So now we gotta talk about what a feature of size is. A feature of size, simply put, is a directly toleranced feature, so something with a, a size and a tolerance, right? that has opposing points that can be measured. So for our purposes, a cylinder, so whether it's internal or external, or a width feature, so a slot or a tab. Now, other things can be features of size. There's something called an irregular feature of size, but let's just keep it simple for now. Widths and diameters will be our features of size for this video. Now, these are allowed to have material conditions. A diameter can be big or small. An example of something that isn't a feature of size is a plane. A plane can't be uh, large or small, right? It can't differ in magnitude. It can just differ in uh, smoothness, flatness, you know what I mean? Those do not have material conditions. So if this applies to a diameter, which we can see it does, it has a material condition. If there's no M, in the feature control frame, it's RFS. It just means that this 30 thousandths applies no matter how large or small the actual feature comes in. Now, that's not what's on the board. What's on the board is MMC. Now, the way I read this, when you see MMC, it, the tolerance, stated tolerance, only applies at MMC. So if this is an internal feature, say it's a hole, uh, the MMC is 0.98. The MMC is 0.98. At that point, you have 30 thousandths of positional tolerance. Now you might add, ask, uh, what if the hole comes in at some other size, which it probably will. You get more tolerance equal to the difference between the MMC and the actual size. So let me show you what that looks like. Say the hole comes in at one inch, you can subtract that from the MMC, you get 20 thousandths. You can add that to what's already in the feature control frame. Now let me show you with a, a chart. Uh, this is the way I like to illustrate this concept. So 
This is the chart I like to make. Of course, it's in tons of textbooks and stuff, but you know, I find it useful. So we're gonna compare the feature size for a whole, an internal feature. If it comes in at 0.98, we'll consider that the MMC. Like I mentioned before, the geometric tile arts, in this case position, only applies at MMC. So geometric tile arts, MMC 30 thousandths. If it comes in at anything other than the MMC, so going toward LMC, AKA the hole gets bigger, you get more geometric tolerance equal to the difference between the actual size and the MMC, you can add 10,000. So we subtract actual size MMC, we can add that to the 30, we get the 40, okay? And then we just keep going down as the hole goes up by 10,000 every time. If the hole comes in at LMC, we get 70 thousandths of positional tolerance. Now, we get another concept here. If we subtract any of these two numbers, we're gonna get the same thing, 0 0.95. 0 0.95 in this case is known as the virtual condition. It's the feature size minus the geometric tolerance. This is what we can use to gauge the part. This is the boundary in which the hole can't violate. So you would consider this in design work, this would be the largest pin that could fit in that hole. Now this is a position tolerance, so we have datums and such to deal with, but essentially that's a boundary, uh, the smallest the hole can be, taking into account the effects of the geometric tolerance, so the, any kind of tilt or anything going on. This is an important concept, makes design easier, okay? So this is essentially what MMC does, LMC does the opposite. So you just flip everything around. If you have the LMC symbol, it's saying that the tolerance only applies at LMC, which would be the largest hole. As the hole gets smaller, you get less tolerance. LMC is typically used to control wall thickness when you have drilling a hole or boring a hole and there's really not very much room. Uh, you want to encourage the hole to be smaller, okay? MMC is typically used for clearance applications. Basically, anytime you have a bolt going through a plate or a flange or something, and it's not a press fit or location, you should be using MMC, okay? So next, while we're here, let's talk about zero at MMC. Now, this freaks people out when they see it on a drawing. You got bagels in the feature control frame. You get phone calls, people say, you know, there's no tolerance on this part. This is impossible to make. We can't make anything perfect. You know, didn't you read the, the GDT handbook? Well, what zero MMC is saying is that at MMC, there is no tolerance available. But as we just saw here, you get more tolerance as the feature gets larger in the case of a hole. So the entire positional tolerance is tied to the size of the unrelated actual mating envelope, the size of the hole. So let's do the chart for the zero at MMC. So as you can see, MMC, zero tolerance, but as the actual feature gets larger, you get more geometric tolerance, and the virtual condition for this feature is slightly larger than the feature we just talked about. You know, if you were really designing something, you could go in and change the nominals to suit whatever design you have, but it gives you more tolerance with the zero MMC if you get the nominals correct. It kind of takes adjustments, but basically, the total geometric tolerance you can have is equal to what's known as the total size tolerance. So if you make the size tolerance of the hole larger, you get more geometric tolerance, okay? So that's zero at MMC. Zero at LMC can be used as well, although not quite as often. Uh, zero at MMC is a really popular concept. Uh, it definitely makes design easier because you can just look at this and know what the virtual condition is. It's equal to the MMC of the feature, right? So next up, let's chat about datum feature material boundaries. Now, before 2009, these were just called LMC, MMC, and uh, RFS. They changed that and now we call them MMB, so maximum material boundary, LMB, least material boundary, and RMB, regardless of material boundary. It's really similar 
And again, I'm sorry, if we're talking about this over here now, the B at MMC for the datum reference. So it does a really similar thing to when you apply it to a tolerance, but it, this takes place more at inspection. So what this is saying is that you can simulate this datum at its MMC, and since it's a secondary datum, you could simulate it at its virtual condition. So this allows something called datum shift. So let me draw a figure on the board and give you an example of how this works. So let's talk about the datum material boundary in a little more detail. I've got an example up here. So we've got a part up here on the top. It's basically a donut, okay? We got two diameters. We can see the profile view here. So we've identified datum A as that flat surface. Datum B is the outside diameter. Now, all it has is a size dimension. So the MMC is gonna equal the virtual condition for this, right? So in this case, the MMC equals virtual equals 2.02. .02. Why that matters is that down here, the hole going through the middle of the donut has a datum uh, reference. So uh, datum B can be simulated at MMC. So if it's a secondary datum, typically it's simulated at a virtual condition. In this case, it doesn't matter because the MMC is the virtual condition, okay? So we got a zero at MMC, so we can easily hard gauge this part if we were making a zillion of them. So this is something you might do if you're designing spacers or washers or whatever. Now, like I said before, when you have zero MMC, it makes life easy to figure out what your virtual condition is. In this case, the virtual condition of this hole is the smallest it can be, which is 0.98, the size minus the uh, geometric tolerance, which in this case is zero, okay? So virtual condition 0.98. Now a possible gauge for this part, we have uh, two diameters, right? So it's stepped right here. So this pin coming out of here, also shown right here, is set at 0.98. Now, you need gauge makers tolerances for all this. Let's, for right now, I'm just saying it's 0.98 and it's perfect, right? This is an ideal gauge. You would have to go through and design a gauge and decide whether you're gonna accept bad parts or reject good parts. So pessimistic or optimistic gauging, not worried about it in this video. So 0.98, if the hole slides over this, we know the geometric tolerance is good. Now I still gotta check the size and make sure the hole's not way too big or whatever but we know the geometric tolerance has been checked, but we have to make sure it's in the datum reference frame. So how we do that, this surface right here on the inside of this uh, donut is gonna be perfectly flat, and it's gonna be where we set datum A with a minimum of three points of contact, or at least so it doesn't rock, okay? And then since this is MMC, it's simulated at the virtual condition, We'll set the diameter of this right here to the virtual condition of datum B, which as we said is up here, 2.02. .02. So when you put the part in, it's free to move around inside of there, okay? It doesn't have to stay still to check it. You can just drop it in. If it doesn't wiggle, it's good. Now again, you gotta check the size on this with a two point measurement, make sure it's not too small but the geometric tolerance is good. Now, in this case, we don't have a geometric tolerance on here, but you do have to set it up correctly to check this geometric tolerance. Now, if you didn't have a hard gauge, you can totally ignore the MMCs on this part. You could have something that collapses onto the outside diameter. So let's, just for fun, let's pretend there's no B there. If there's no B there, you can't set that datum at a specific size. It's got to collapse upon it. That's what R and B implies. So you'd have to have a mandrel or a chuck or a V block or whatever to collapse on that datum, and then you check the feature. So it makes it more difficult to check, but if it passes that check, that check is more stringent than just dropping it into another diameter, okay? 
So it just depends how many you're going to make, what kind of inspection equipment. But you know, the Bs, or I'm sorry, the MMCs and LMCs in here give you more tolerance for your part. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to go over a couple topics that I found interesting. Okay, if you enjoyed it, please you know like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree with anything I said, and uh, I'll see you next time.